Hi everyone, I'm Aria. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited because we finally reached 1,000 subscribers. Uh, so a huge thank you to everybody who's supporting the channel. And if you're not subscribed but enjoy my content, consider subscribing as well. And today we're going to be creating a stylized water splash using the new Mantaflow fluid engine. So here we go. Okay, so open up a new scene in Blender and you can just select the camera and the light here and hit delete and then we're going to use the default cube as our domain so select that and then we're going to hit s to scale and type in one zero to scale it by 10 and then we want to move it up to the ground level here so we're going to hit g and then z to lock to that axis and then type in 10 again by the way if we had scaled this by six then we would also just want to move it up by the same amount all right next let's turn on the x-ray toggle here just so we can see through to see what we're doing then the next thing we want to do is duplicate this domain but before we do that we're just going to right click here and we're going to set the origin to the 3d cursor now you'll see that the origin of this cube is down here at the bottom by the way if your 3d cursor is not at the world origin what you can do is just right click here and you can go to snap and you can say cursor to world origin Okay, so now we're going to select the domain and we just want to scale it on the Z axis a little bit more. So hit S, Z and type in 1.1 and then left click to set that. Alright, so now we can duplicate our domain here. So we're going to hold shift and hit D and then we're going to hit escape right away to leave it in place. Then we're going to hit S, Z and type in 0.375 and then we're going to hit S and then hold shift and then just drag our mouse into the center a little bit here just so the faces aren't crashing into each other and then we're going to hit G, Z, hold shift one more time and just slowly drag this up a bit just so we have a slight margin around our domain and our flow object. And just so we don't get confused, let's name our objects here. So this is going to be our flow object here. And we can select the original cube here and call this the domain. Alright, and now we just want to add one more piece of geometry. So hit Shift A, we'll go to Mesh and click Icosphere. Then we can bring this up on the Z axis by hitting G, Z and typing in 18. And now we can right click on this, go to Shade Smooth. Let's go over to the Modifiers Properties here. Click right here and then we can choose subdivision surface and set both the render and the viewport to 1. And then the last thing you want to do is just scale this down a bit. So we're going to hit S and type in 0.9 and then hit enter. Okay, so I know I said that was the last piece of geometry, but we do want to add in a ground plane as well. So hit shift A and we'll click plane and then we'll hit S10 to scale it up by 10. Then we just want to bring it up a little bit, so G, Z, hold shift, and then bring it up till it's just underneath of our flow object, and then click. Awesome, so now we're ready to add our physics, so let's just leave the ground plane selected here, and we can go into the physics properties, and we're going to click collision, and we can leave everything as default. The next thing we're going to do is select our domain object here, and click fluid. We want to change the type to domain, and we can change the domain type to liquid. Let's set the resolution divisions to 64. And by the way, these are pretty important. Um, if you're ever using Mantaflow and you're getting weird results, like um, your fluid is kind of sitting above the collision object or it's maybe not showing up at all, try changing your resolution divisions. Um, 64 seems to work pretty good for most things, but if it's not working, try to go up a little bit. Okay, so next we want to set the time scale to 0.275. And then we can set our time steps to 8 and 6. And these values, including the resolution, will affect the time it takes to cache your simulation. So if it's super slow or you've got a slower machine, uh, you can try lowering these a little bit. It will change your results a bit, but I would definitely change these first before I change the resolution. Okay, then we can scroll down and we can just skip all this stuff here. We're going to go to Diffusion. Click this little down arrow and then we're going to click this little um, preset and click the oil preset. By the way, if you do want to get um, a list of some different types of uh, liquids here, you can go to this link here. I'll leave it in the description and it gives you some examples of how you can use the diffusion settings to get different types of fluid. 
All right, so scroll down a bit further and I did not add particles into my animation. As you can see, you can do that, but I would um, advise only do this if you got a very powerful system. Um, it doesn't take too much longer to cache, but definitely when it comes to rendering, um, having these on will increase your render times by quite a bit. Um, I'm just gonna leave them on just so I can show you how you can utilize them. But again, um, only use these if you're using like a render farm or if you got a ridiculously powerful machine or lots of time to wait for renders. <laughs> okay. So then we're gonna click mesh here, open this here and we can change this to three. Two is fine as well. I'm just gonna do three for mine. But again, uh, depending on your system, you can fluctuate between those two there. And then the last thing we need to do for the domain is just uh, set the start and end frames. So um, I'm just going to do 120 for this. I'm also going to set this to 120 here just to match. And then we can set this type to final. And by the way, if you want to bake your particles and your liquid and mesh all separately, you can use modular. I just prefer final because I find it's a bit quicker and I've already got my settings all ready to go. All right, so now we can click our flow object here. We'll click fluid again and set this to flow and we'll change from smoke to liquid and then everything can be left as default. Then finally, we want to select our effector object here. We'll click fluid one more time. Click here and click effector and we can just change our surface thickness to 0.1 um, and this will just give us a bit thicker of a swirl. Then leave everything else the same. And then the final thing that I did was click soft body here and we'll just uncheck goal. Let's open up the edges tab here, change the push and pull to 0.6 and we'll change the bending to 0.2, which will just prevent our soft body from collapsing kind of on itself. Let's also give it some stiffness and self collisions. Open this and we'll set the collision stiffness to three. Okay, so before we cache our fluid simulation, we just want to cache our soft body simulation. So we can set the start and end frames to match our animation length here and click bake. And it shouldn't take very long to do that, only a few seconds. And so now if we go back to frame one and hit play, you can see here that our soft body simulation is doing what we want it to do. All right, so now that we've got that, the last thing we need to do is just bake our fluid here. So let's click our domain. Let's go back to the physics properties here and we can go down to our cache settings and bake. Now this is going to take um, between 10 and 20 minutes depending on your system here. So I'll bake that and then we'll be back when that's finished. Okay, so that took about five minutes or so. Um, hopefully yours didn't take too long to bake. So now just click this to go back to frame one and we can just click this outer uh, cube here and hit H to hide it or click right here. And now if we play our animation, we can watch it play through. Alright, so you can see that there is a lot going on here just uh, from all the particles. So if we just click here um, and go to particles here, we can just turn all of these off for now. Just so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's just right click on our domain here and shade smooth. Okay, so now that we've got something that we like here, we can just pick a frame, something that looks good to you, and we can just add some lighting here. So let's go into our world properties here, click this little circle, and we'll go to environment texture, click open, and then find an HDRI on your computer here if you want to use the one that I'm using. Um, I got it from HDRI Haven, and it's called Abandon Hall. I'll make sure to leave the link in the description, and then we can just click open here. Let's go up to our render settings here. Instead of EV, let's change this to cycles. If you have a GPU, set it to GPU, and then we can hit our render view here. All right, so now that we've got our lighting set up here, we'll just uh, keep our domain selected here, and we're gonna give it a material. So go into the materials properties, click new, and then all we need to do is bring our roughness all the way down and the transmission all the way up to one, and you can see now that we've got our see-through water. Now we can click our effector object here and we're going to hit new, change the color to something that you want and we can crank the metallic all the way up. Okay, so if you did want to add in particles here, let's just go back to our flat shading here, select the domain and we can go back to the particles tab and just make sure that we turn these on. Uh, we can leave the top one off, we don't really need that. 
Okay, so now what we can do is create a particle object. So we're going to hit Shift A and go into Mesh here, and we'll click Icosphere. And then we can hit GZ just to bring it down here. Then we're going to hit S and drag our mouse towards the center just to scale it down quite a bit. Then we can hit the decimal key on our numpad just to zoom in here. Let's right click and shade smooth. Then we can go over here to our materials tab, click new, bring the roughness down to zero and the transmission up to one. And now if we go into our rendered view here, you can see that we've got our bubble. Then one more thing we can do just to give it um, a little nicer look is if we go over to our render properties here, go down to film, make sure that transparent and transparent glass is selected and now you can see it's looking a little bit more like a bubble. You can subdivide this if you want but it's so small that you probably don't need to. But if you are going to be looking at the bubble up close then you may want to add um, at least one subdivision to that. Alright and then we can click back onto our liquid here click over to the particle settings and then if we click bubbles right here you'll see that right now it's showing up as just a guide so we can click object and then we want to select our bubble which in our case is icosphere 1 and I know it's a bit hard to see but once you render it you'll see that there's these little tiny dots here you can also click your bubble here and just hit s to scale it up just a little bit and now you can see that we've got tons and tons of bubbles here. Um, and of course you can do the same for the foam. If you want to just duplicate this and just bring the roughness up to about 0.5, you'll get much more of like kind of a white foamy look and as well for the splash. But like I said, this will increase your render times uh, quite significantly. So unless you have a render farm available or you want to pay for an online service or something like that, I would suggest just leaving them out like I did and call it stylist. Alright, so that's pretty much everything. The only other thing I did was add a background, much the same as my last tutorial. So if you want to stick around for the next few minutes, um, I'll do a time lapse on how I did that. Alright, so I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks again so much for supporting this channel. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, please do that. And I'm excited to bring you guys more great content in the future. Alright, bye.